Hello my friends and welcome back to MTD North America. Today I'm with my good friend Mike and we are at OptiPro Systems here in Ontario, New York. Mike, thank you so much for being a part of MTD CNC. Sure, thanks for having me. Well, today we get to learn a little bit more about OptiPro Systems history, where you come from, what the machines are like, and we're standing in front of some of the originals, aren't we? Yes, we are, definitely. We're standing in front of some uh, relics, but uh, important relics to our company. So it's been, a, um, it's been a, we've been in business since 1982, and uh, we've had the pleasure of being a distributor, a master cam distributor, a machine tool distributor, and now we, these machines are kind of what was our entry into <clears throat> designing and building our own machines. Especially uh, this machine here was our entry level into precision optics. This was our entry into building a small CNC milling machine uh, back in, actually we started this project back in 1986, 87 time frame. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. And you yeah. said 1982, so we're right near that 40-year mark, Yeah, we, we are, next year. Well, yeah. what do these things look like today? Should we have a look? Well, sure. They're definitely, you'll see, they're a lot different. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Mike, these are the new machines. They look good. Yeah. And what are we doing here, and what model is this one? So this is, uh, this is our latest and greatest uh, creation that we've developed here at OptiPro. It's our OptiSonic 550X machine. This is an ultrasonic machining center for mainly for brittle materials, ceramics, optical glasses. So it's uh, for precision machining of uh, those types of components that are being used in the medical, military, cinematography, space exploration, that type of stuff. Wow, that sounds detailed. Yeah. When you say ultrasonic, for those of us who don't know what ultrasonic actually means on a machine, right? what does that mean? So basically what we're doing is simplified is uh, it's almost like if you've ever used a hammer drill, it's moving the tool up and down while it's spinning it. So, you know, it basically what it's doing is it's creating a much freer machining process to allow the tool to work, to stay clean, and also to reduce the forces that are being imparted onto the part. So it's important as far as uh, precision goes. It makes the tools last longer. And obviously everyone knows in the metalworking world, if your tools wear out, you've got inaccuracy in your parts. So that's, that's what this is a big, uh, is, has a big impact on. How interesting. So two questions for you based on that. One, ultimately, is it finished we're trying to create or is this for a number of different projects? And two, why would I buy an ultrasonic style machine over a traditional milling machine when we're thinking about tool life itself? Well, that, I mean, the, um, it's, it's really for finish. It's for size because obviously your dimensions, geometry are critical on, on anything, whether it's optical or a precision ceramic component. So maintaining the tool accuracy maintains part accuracy. So I think the, the, the reasons that this would be, a company would buy this over a traditional CNC machining center, this is five axis. We use a very high precision grinding spindle so for rotationally symmetric geometries, uh, we're very, very high precision rotary axis for the B axis on the spindle. So there's a lot built into it. Besides the fact that our ultrasonic technology, we call it IntelliSonic, and uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, we actually adapt the tool as it's in the grind. We, uh, we're modifying the power that's being pushed into the tool so it stays on this resonant frequency, which is its power optimization parameters. So there's a lot that goes into this. This was all created under uh, Navy research grants, uh, Nav Air specifically, and uh, they were very supportive in our efforts on this. So uh, hats off to them. They were very important in our development of these technologies. And, and the cool thing about it is they're now being used in a lot of, uh, a lot of manufacturing companies throughout the United States and now even in Germany. And you guys, you said, earlier you've been doing this since 1982 and so yeah. the technology is almost 40 years from you guys at this yeah. point yeah we, we've been we've been at this a long time and uh, we continue to grow to advance our technologies we're constantly looking at new ways to grind and polish and improve the precision and measure we have non-contact surface measurement uh, five axis non-contact with our ultra surf technology so we're on the bleeding edge of everything as far as freeform optics, that's a big part now where these, these types of machines for grinding and uh, finishing freeform shapes and, and precision glass and ceramic materials, that's a big 
uh, opportunity going forward. All the stuff with autonomous vehicles and all those kinds of things. They need high precision ceramic or glass components. So that's where these kinds of technologies are, we're, we're just really in the infancy of the importance of it. Right. What type of industries, people, would you go, guys, let's give this a look? So, so that, that's an interesting um, thought because we're, we're learning all, all the time about new opportunities. Uh, ceramic matrix composites, that's a new world where a lot of the uh, jet engine manufacturers, there are new kinds of materials that are being created to, to reduce heat, to reduce thermal expansion, uh, but they're hard to machine. We're also, and, and so all of those industries that are advancing technologies, making things lighter weight, but stronger. Well, that, that's where the ceramic stuff can, can come in, especially these ceramics matrix. So um, it's also important in the um, industries that uh, we're looking at for metals for titanium, for, so we, we don't even know yet how many opportunities there are. We've got, we've just recently, we've gotten several requests for being able to see what will ultrasonic do for some of those metal components, drilling small holes, um, higher precision, better surface quality, those kinds of things in metals. So, and especially some of the exotic steels. So this is new, this is a new, uh, effort for us and something that we're always looking for new people to say hey can you do this and we'll try it uh, we don't know I, I'm going to say honestly we've really been working for the, the military and medical and ceramic component industries so we've been so focused on that that we really haven't even scratched the surface on, on what the other opportunities would be in those uh, I'll say com complex uh, metallic alloys might be so there's another whole world out there that we're, we, we're just getting started to look at now. Mike, I was recently at a company in, in Southern California called LA Gauge and they were machining beryllium. And they had all of these secondary operations in order to create this beautiful mirror finish. Would an OptiPro machine like this enhance the capability of maybe being a one and done on that beryllium? Because I know these are some of those unique materials that are lightweight that go from the hottest conditions to the coldest conditions without any expansion that go in the space on the far side of the, on the dark side of the moon right. to the hottest side of the sun. Is a machine yeah. like this where you'd look at something to create that perfect finish without all of that additional work? Well, it's interesting that you should ask because we do have a customer that is doing beryllium. Beryllium is a, is a unique material, as you know. There's, there's many, um, there's many issues with it. You have to be very careful as to how you machine it. So I would say yes to the fact that you can machine it with our processes. I would say I wouldn't, I don't know for sure that we could get there. When, when you start talking about the precision and the accuracies that are required, many times we can get to machine a surface to, you know, plus or minus a micron, but it's still a machine surface and it typically would need to go to a polish like our ultraform finishing process, which is a very cool process I think we'll probably talk about a little later today. Uh, but um, so it really depends on what the finish requirements are. So it's, you know, maybe, but again, it might be a pre-shaping of that surface to get it so close that the finishing process is very much reduced. So it's a lot about that, even in the ceramics and glass materials. We know that they're typically going to have to go to a finishing process, but you can greatly reduce that time by making the surface very precise. And when we go to that finishing process of polish or whatever it might yeah. be, OptiPro can support that part of the application we as well. We can supply the finishing processes and we can supply the measurement processes. So our UltraSurf 5 axis non-contact uh, metrology stuff is, is really unique in the world. Um, we're selling these machines all over the world. So uh, it's, it's very complex software that we've developed, uh, very complex motion control, all uh, air bearing, linear motor technology. I'm hoping you get a chance to take a look at that also today. Yeah. And if somebody wants to learn more about you, Mike, and more about the company of OptiPro Systems, the history, the machines, if they want to jump in, what social media platforms, website, where can they find you? Personal phone numbers, home addresses? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I guess I won't give everybody my home address or my <laughs> phone number, but I will say that we've got a lot of information on our website. So I would encourage people to go there. We do have a LinkedIn, Instagram, and all the other technologies, but I let our younger marketing team handle all that stuff. So, um, but there is a lot of information out there uh, that, that you can find on our website and certainly call in. Uh, we have our sales at OptiPro.com uh, where you can get, uh, if you have interest in our products, please don't, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, and we'll, There'll be people that'll get back in touch with you. Mike, thanks again. Yeah. Really educational. It excites me to learn about this type of technology and thank yeah. you for sharing it with yeah, MTD. I'm glad, I'm glad you could come, definitely. Thank you.